if Yahweh is outside of time, I've always wanted to know your opinion on this. If Yahweh is outside of time, is the fall still happening? So the record of the passage that is gone, the record is there, but it's no longer happening. So it's like us when we are sinning, we then get affected by the record of the sin from our sinning. You can now break the record of sin on you that's come from your sinning through the blood, but you can't undo what you've done. Hi everyone, welcome to Hope for the Future podcast. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Really excited to be doing the next one. Really look forward to these. I think that um, the feedback we're getting from people is that they really love them and I, I really appreciate the conversation. Mm. And um, I think now that people have fully realized you're my son and that we're going to have a mm. decent conversation, it also sets up, I think, for people to have that conversation with their own children. So true. really, really love it. Yeah. I, I haven't even thought about that. That's really cool. Yeah, the feedback has been a really beautiful way for many reasons, but it's the, uh, the main feedback I've heard is like, it's just nice to see people, and especially someone like you, who people usually just see on stage teaching, just have a real normal conversation. Yeah, absolutely. This is exactly what it's always been yeah. like for us. Exactly. I mean, this is to me, is just dining room table. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you sit at dining room table and have these discussions, and sometimes they're more serious, and sometimes they're just interesting. Mm. And you go, oh, that's interesting. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, nice. Been looking forward to them as well, so. Yeah, me too, man. So, before we crack into um, things, um, what have you got coming up? So this, we are currently recording this on the 2nd of October. And um, so you've got something coming up soon? Yeah, there's two exciting things for me that are on the brink of happening. Um, the first one is Thunder Acad start of Thunder Academy for this yeah. year. Yes! Yeah. I'm really looking forward. To we have 38 students left, um, mm. coming and... We still actually have two two positions left for people to come if they are able to find their own accommodation and those mm. kind of things. But um, looking forward to the group of people that are coming. Mm. They're very much um, some mature. Mm. Some we have an 85 year old I think coming, this and guy, the youngest cool. I think is 23, nice. 24. That's good beautiful. and a good balance of mm. ages, male and female, married couples and singles cool. and so how many people this year total it's 38 total total nice going to actually be attending and so we're lo i'm looking forward to it mm. it's a real it's a real challenge and it's going to be a real challenge for mm. the people for sure mm. a lot of lot of things i thought i was going to be teaching i'm now not going to and yeah. talking about so cool. i'm kind of looking forward to seeing how it works out the other thing that i'm really excited about is our conference this year yeah written um, light i'm so excited about what mm. yahweh has given me to speak about, about kingship and about the role of a king and who we are and everything that's associated with that. Some mm. of the newer things that I've been teaching and talking about, the fingerprint of a human being, mm. what it really means spiritually for us, what what I believe it bears record to spiritually. Um, and then also the spiraling staircase, what it means to up and down and mm. the ladder that was positioned on Christ, the same ladder that Jacob had an encounter with. So, I mean, just things like that. Mm. And also we have Lindy and Lindy Masters and Ricky Nuvenhuis coming yeah. to be my guest speakers at the conference yeah. as well. And we have one special guest speaker that'll be doing a session for us this year. Oh, cool. And I'm going to keep him quiet so oh, that people... Oh, okay. Yeah, and so there's definitely a group of people that are starting to bear record to the labor of the last 30 years that mm. have now picked up the banner and picked mm. up the baton mm. and are starting to move within this time for mm. us to bring them forward a bit and to, for people out there to mm. get to know yeah. who they are because yeah. it's not just it's Ian. It's not a one-man tribe. It's man. not just Ian any longer yeah. and I'm so glad. Mm. I, you know, I was in tears the other day just talking to a group of people saying I never believed we'd ever have this. Totally. I always thought it would just be me laboring mm. to try and bring this mystical mm. realm ground out in a practical way mm. here in creation for the body of Christ. And it's not just me anymore. Mm. There's a body of people and I don't just mean leaders. You know, there's a lot of people out mm. there that are grinding this thing out into mm. their daily lives and it's amazing to listen mm. to what's happening. Mm. So That's so yeah. sick. I have the biggest FOMO about Ridden and Light because for the first time and since I started playing for home conference, this is the first year I won't be able to play. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and let people know why you're oh, not Oh, yeah, I'm play. having a baby. Another baby <laughs> His number His wife two. is. His wife's yeah, having, I'm not a having a baby. <laughs> My wife's having a baby. I think, yeah, we're due just before, so I won't, probably won't be there. But um, I'm so excited to be live streaming in, and um, yeah, I'm pumped to watch it and pumped to see what happens. 
Okay. And if you want to see either of um, any information about those two events, Thunder Academy or Ridden in Light, I'll just put the link in the description below so people can awesome. um, follow through. We thought we'd do something different for this podcast. Um, we as a team talked about this a long time ago, but we wanted to do a bit of crowdsourcing for the questions. So it could be a bit of touch and go. <laughs> could be touch and go. It also could be another case of we answer like one or two questions because yep. we, we take a lot of rabbit holes. Let's kick it off, eh? So b before we do, um, it's a great pleasure for me as a father to um, have his son grow up um, to engage in business, to become part of what we're doing and through autonomous empowerment mm. and, and watching him grow, I don't consider Jash, although he's my son and I love him like that, in a setting like this, I consider him my equal. So we stand together mm. to labor to do something. This is not about me mm. being the big kingpin, whatever. Sure, it's about me answering questions and us having a discussion mm. over them. But I think it's really important for people to know that my whole role is to empower this. Mm. If, if we can do it, and if there's one person on the earth that can do it, it means we all can win. Mm. And so it means that it gives hope for anyone else that, mm. that they too can just climb in the paddock and grow and mature. Mm. And so before we start any questions, I just wanted to say that mm. today, it's such a privilege to have you here asking mm. me questions that, mm. I mean, we so used to enjoy our dining room table times. I really mm. did. I used mm. to love family dining room table and this to me is just an extension of that but yeah. and now today you guys mm. listening to us asking these questions from yeah. the the community is um all part of you sitting at the dining room table yeah, yeah literally and so i'll, I'll, I'll yeah. just say to people hey here's my table yeah please welcome. be welcome to come yeah, and sit down at the table I and let's that. feed together well it's an honor for me too to yeah. to do this with you as well it's pretty crazy man yeah, and to be working all together with our team is a massive honor. Yeah. That's cool. And it's just really, feels really organic yeah, to be doing this, normal. you know? So, yeah, it's really special. So, what's the moon? No, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, okay, you okay. The new one that's showing up or the planet that's flying oh, yeah, around. Oh, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. What should be the fundamental thing we teach our kids? So, I don't know if they're referring to something that's spiritual or natural or just general. I, I think there's three things. There are not three things that I think mm. for me personally that would be very important. The first one is character. Mm. The second one is integrity. Mm. With that, honesty in conversation. The third one is how to handle money properly. Mm. I think there are three major things that children today don't get taught in a right way by example. Mm. And... And, and, and particularly in the financial arena. Mm. And so for me, that would be fundamental things that, you know, all the spirit stuff, you're, well, you can teach your child all the spirit stuff you like, but unless you have that lifestyle, mm. information is irrelevant. They'll do what you do rather than what you say. Yeah, well, you can't have, well, I mean, based on what you know and what we've seen, you can't really deal with big spiritual moments if you don't have pretty deep character, right? Absolutely. I mean, I, I've mm. seen in the body of Christ so many um, fathers of the faith mm. and people that have been looked up to right now on the face of the earth that um, I, it just grieves me really to see it happen, but mm. they're, they're messing up really badly as far as mm. I'm concerned regarding righteousness mm. within the house mm. and, um, and integrity. Mm. And again, it's righteousness and integrity that kind mm. of follow that whole character issue mm. thing that just seems to be a way that, I, and I don't even know why it's like that. I'm going to, in the conference, I'm going to be talking about how to, how to keep your heart right. Mm. And some of the things that I've done that have really helped me, benefited me as a minister, being away from my wife, mm. you know, for periods of time, so that my heart doesn't want things that mm. are simple process mm. that I've just instigated and didn't realize nobody else does these things. Mm. So in our conference as well, I intend talking about some of that. But I think that as we move into the relationship that there needs to come a clear sound that we can do this right mm. and it can be done right mm. without, without the mess up that I'm seeing mm. in the lives of leaders today. Mm. Yeah, that's tough, eh? Definitely. Definitely character's massive. I guess in a way, um, integrity and 
I guess financial integrity. Honesty. Is on, and honesty is yeah. all is all integrated with character, right? Yes, absolutely. And maybe a follow on question or um, I don't know, follow on from that is how would you outwork teaching your kids about character, about integrity and honesty and financial dealing? By leading by example. Like, Doing, not saying. Yes. Yeah, so and, and not only that, but also, you know, we've often had conversations. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dad, why did you do that? And then, well, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Mm. I mean, that has got to come out of our mouth, mm. particularly to your children, so mm. they can see accountability. Yeah. And it's okay then for them to have a voice. Mm. So I think that it's not only, it's not only in, uh, honesty, it's integrity that comes with that as well. And it builds that, for me, it builds that trust issue mm. that what you're saying is actually what you get mm. it's not what you're saying it's something that you're not you know and i've often said to people if they you know people have a lot of a lot of opinions about my life but i said to them if they want to know who i am just go and talk to you go and talk yeah. to jake go and talk to people you know person. lindy ricky you know people my people that i've been around they've been in my family life go and talk to my wife mm. just you know like hey don't have an opinion until you've talked to those yeah. around me yeah and see if this stuff is really being ground out because mm. you know we all have our, our ups and downs in that grinding out process but um i think that as time goes on it gets better and better mm. and i for me personally i'm seeing that mm. which is why i just love what we are doing and mm. love what you're doing and the house in mm. the household of the beloved mm. before you said um you said you're going to do some new teaching on what you've done um to keep mum close uh yep. and other and other areas of your life when you've been traveling is that because you've done that type of teaching before i'm like guarding your heart i think was the teaching that you did um is there more things that you've done yeah, yeah there then? is absolutely i want to for me i want to talk about um not only how to guard your heart but actually how to surround your heart and surround those inside your heart with the different layers mm. and the protective mechanism that i've got for that so people mm. don't intrude mm. into the layer they're not supposed to when i'm you know three weeks away from a wife and i'm not connecting mm. in the way like i mean it's so much easier now because we have internet and you can mm. you can yeah. see my wife and talk to her on skype and yeah. on on zoom and all of these mm. things you know that are so much easier to mm. see her face but um, you know, a lot of people still don't even do that. And yeah, so, it's crazy to me. It, but it's just how to layer the stuff mm. and then how to protect it mm. and what to do and how to engage with the lattice work mm. of, of what is there so that you don't go beyond that as a boundary. Um, you know, I think one of the things that I, I find really helpful for me is that I don't see a woman anymore. Mm. I see Adam. Mm. They're all part of sonship, which is maturity, technon helios, or mature one or immature one. And I just don't have a reference point for them as a woman in the body. Mm. They're Adam. And according mm. to Genesis 5, we're called Adam. So I'm, I look at it like that, mm. that we stand as an equal. Woman mm. is not less than a man. We mm. stand as an equal. And I consider them sons as equals standing with me. And son isn't gendered as in male. It's mature, immature. Mm. Male and female. And male and female. Mm. Adam. Mm. Call their names Adam. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm called gonna, their names Adam yeah, from that's, Genesis. Yeah, this is Genesis five. There we go. <laughs> yeah, more so, on that to come, right? Yep. 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 We've just finished a. I mean, I've just finished a really great um, teaching on that, mm -hmm. and kind of a little bit more cushioned out with information that is, uh, I think, going to be very upsetting to a male-dominated, controlling environment. So glad to hear that. And and I can't like personally, I can't stand it. I think mm -hmm. it's reptilian seed lineage stuff. Yep and utterly corrupt. A woman must stand as an equal with her husband through equal equity given to mm -hmm. one another where you can stand as equals so that equality of our record in Yahweh as sons can become Love real it. for us. So, Love it. Yep. Yeah, going to upset the apple cart, yeah. but hey, yeah, I, when on. haven't I done that all my life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you just did the Genesis 5 teaching um, uh, in at Reaching Forward from Portuguese. And have you done, did you do one in the UK? Yes, I did one in, one in Ireland. Yeah. And also I've just done a, even a better one um, with a Singapore group of people. Oh, beautiful. As well. And so just every time I find I do it, yeah. it gets a bit better and a bit better. Yeah. And I, because it's kind of a new expression and understanding for me, mm. my understanding is increasing. Your articulation. Yeah, correct. And being able to present it. I mean, yeah. in a Portuguese, when it happened, that was... Um, within 10 minutes yeah, of the whole thing unfolding. You never that do I did that, that too. No, I don't. But 
the person, the lady who was, and, and, I mean, Trish is amazing as a oversight, but mm. she, she said to me, what's going on? Because she could see the mm. encounter. And I told her, and she said, well, teach it. And, yeah, and I mean, she's the authority oh, of the meeting. Yeah, true. She told you. And she said, teach it. And I'm like, but I've only just, just said, teach it, Ian. Teach it to us right now. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> Might and be so, a first for you, eh? Yeah, it was, it was a first. I used to try and keep those things really mm. locked up for a while mm. so that I can process. But mm. um, I've really enjoyed it. It's been oh, amazing. I'm so stoked. Yeah. Cool. Well, that will, that will be out early 2025 yep. on um, membership.com. Com. So that's going to be a good one. Yep. That one from Singapore. Well, <laughs> on the note of finances, how did the church in Acts manage finances, manage finances so no one was in lack? Should we re be replicating this? What a great question. I don't think it's about the church. This would be my opinion on that statement. People of the way, I guess. Yeah, so, so uh, the, the body of people that were in Antioch Let's frame it this way. It wasn't the body, sorry, it wasn't the senior leader that handled the finances. It was all the individuals within the body that kind of considered themselves equals where they went from house to house breaking bread. Mm. And so wherever a thing was seen where there was a need, it was met by those in the body. Mm. And that's why the word says they, they, they all lacked nothing. They all had houses and they all lacked nothing. Mm. But on top of that, this and this was the key, it was the first time that trading happened in the body of Christ that was shows. where they bought the, the, their trades or their offerings. They called them offerings in those days. And I don't really mind what they call it, mm. but they bought it to the apostles' feet. Mm. And because of the power of what had happened internally in the lives of people where mm. they now recognize they were own, owners of nothing, stewards of everything, and mm. to come to maturity, that happened. It brought such fear on the body of Christ mm. that no man dare join themselves to them because of that fear, mm. especially when Ananias and Sapphira died yeah, yeah. because of the internal thing that wasn't right as a barometer in them. And, and let, so, you know, people have said, oh, God, it wasn't fear. Like, why did that happen to them? Mm. And I'll tell you this, when holiness and righteousness shows up in the way that it did there, that they are now showing up in the yeah. world today. Um it's like there's been some amazing things that have happened over in Africa and and things that are now unfolding from what Yahweh did during the conference those three conferences we did there. Um winds of change, eh? Yeah, it just just it was beautiful, like mm. to watch Yahweh come and engage with those two beings through tornadoes mm. and watch the snow and everything that went on there and, and it's still even more now, like yeah, like the snowing and the I think it's in the Sinai or Sahara Desert, it's blooming. They've got so much rain there now and snow. <laughs> the snowed in the desert. Anyway, That's and so, crazy. but but when holiness and righteousness come, the being of justice comes mm. to oversee the trade that goes on. Mm. And when it when when the being of justice comes and engages in this way, it doesn't look to see what's right and wrong. Mm. Oh. It doesn't come to judge what's right so you can get undone what you think is wrong mm. or you can get recompense for what you're wrong what it looks for is the blood mm. and the purifying power of the blood and when there when that blood is not present justice sits to manifest that which is now unholy so that which is unholy dies of its own accord because of the lack of the evidence of the blood so you're referencing what happened in egypt obviously uh, uh, yes all part of it post? yes yeah. but i believe that's what also happened with ananias and sapphira mm. so justice was sitting over the mm. treasury that was being exchanged Gosh. and this is this is the thing like for my conference here in new zealand mm. i'm going to be pushing into this thing mm. with this angel of justice what it means the process mm. for it and why we trade so that when you come, you don't do it with man-pleasing eyes, mm. service, mm. with to please others, but you do it as unto Yahweh mm. to engage with Him, so that justice can sit over the treasury, mm. and that which is corrupt will manifest and die of its own accord. So when so we, you, you said you said the angel of justice was looking for the blood and yep and people. What, what, what do you mean by that? In a so, sense so the blood, yes. Yeah, so the blood of Christ makes us holy, not our own works. Yeah, but how did it see that in those people in that time? I guess. Where, yeah, where they've measured that blood in their life, because remember this was after Christ's oh, death. Oh, the blood of Jesus in their life. Yes, right. correct. So they came with a pretense where there was no holiness and no righteousness, 
And because of the lack of holiness and righteousness, the blood of Christ was not present right. because of their pride. Because of and Ananias and Sapphira. Correct. Like it's a, a, it's a dangerous thing when you begin to engage in that process, and wow. which is why you don't just do it flippantly. And mm. that's why we trade the way we do. That's mm. why we talk about what we do and leverage and trading. Yeah. It's because of what happened with um, mm. with the apostles there when they laid their treasure at the apostles' feet. Mm. And it's a scary thing. And mm. so you you've got to prepare your heart mm. and in community. Mm. And also as this individual, so it's not the house that handles the responsibility, it's the people who are trading, the responsibility sits on them. Mm. And, it and the angel doesn't different. look to the house, although yeah. we are now responsible for what has been traded with regards to the treasury and the integrity of everything yeah. that goes on and the complete openness with those that are in leadership and connected to what's going on in the conferences mm. who all know every single detail mm. financially mm. and all get a portion of that that was agreed to before we even start. So mm. if we have 100,000 people, you get the same, same percentage as you would do mm. with 100 people, you get the same percentage. Mm. And so we just work it out like that. Mm. And so if you get a million dollars in, then they still get 250, say, or, you know, if you do 100 people and 25% of the income comes to you, if you get a million people join and you get $10 million, they still get 25%, mm. they don't sell it two and a half thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's inte like integrity this openness and integrity that I don't see in the body of Christ. Mm. So you think that's that kind of openness and integrity, kind of what you're referencing, talking about raising your kids, is, is you think that's what they were sort don't of... Don't see, yep. That's what they were outworking. Totally the agree. Of Antioch. Yep. Antioch. Absolutely and completely agree. And okay, so I guess. So the whole family, so it comes back to families. Mm. So families were all involved in everything that went on mm. within the house. True. And so they went from house to house, family to family, mm. families coming together with families, mm. breaking bread and seeing a need and meeting it. Mm. So no man had any debt. Like this is what I love about it. No man had any debt. Mm. They all had houses and no man lacked anything. Like, come on. Like, mm. what's. Yeah. Uh, we'll touch on this in a second. Can, can you imagine? I'm sorry. Like, no, I love let, it. Let me, let me rave here for a bit. Can you imagine in a church of 2,000, 3,000 people, if the body had taken care of all the debt in 3,000 people, mm. and now uh, everyone had all their needs, needs being met, what would actually come in? Yeah, crazy, man. To, you know, and so anyway, like, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, mm. show, like, I'm not there yet, but yeah, I've got a goal. So, yeah, I guess that answers. Should we be replicating this? That's a big fat yes. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. think so. And you're already, we're already, as a tribe, I guess, pushing into yes. to that scenario. Absolutely. Like, like for me, like, and, and, I, and I don't mind this, I'm not going to give amounts, but mm. um, my wife and I privately have already saved for our home conference mm. to pay aircraft tickets and honorariums out of our own money. Mm. So that any money that comes in then goes to those people that are here speaking, serving, doing mm. whatever. Mm. Can you imagine if that was done everywhere? Everywhere. So for me, as a king, mm. um, Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba, not from his household treasury, from Israel, mm. but from his personal treasury, more than the queen of Sheba gave to him. Can you imagine? Is that it? from his personal treasury? Yes, <laughs> it's very, it says it in scripture. Oh, crack up. So can you imagine what would happen in a conference, if the senior leader paid out of his own treasury all the expenditure for the conference, mm. and then the abundance that came in was distributed in a right way amongst everybody, mm. do you think people would then lack? Mm. Don't think so. Like we've just had this conference in Australia with Don, and Don gave in gold and silver to every single person more than their, than their, ticket, cost. Than, than their ticket cost them to come from his own treasury. Yeah. That set a precedent mm. as a king. Mm. Show me who else is doing this. Like, mm. where is this happening? So this is what I love. All it takes is one. Mm. When one wins and you're in the same paddock, we all win. Mm. And so now for me, the bar's gone higher. And mm. so, like, again, for me, like, we've saved for this. So, and by the time people hear this, um, Ricky and Lindy will already have in their, in their own income, the day they leave to come here to New Zealand, I'm paying them an honorarium yeah, that, that is really generous. Like, I mean, mm. over and beyond what they would ever expect to get from a mm. single conference, mm. I believe. Mm -hmm. um, 
and quite adequate to meet their needs. Mm. So the aircraft ticket in business and also the air, their honor is already taken care of mm. before they even arrive yeah, at the it. conference. And so to me, to set up, to set this up, Yahweh's had to work with my wife and I mm. in our own treasury. Mm. We've had to build our own treasury, ensure that every year we look at saving to be able to mm. do this kind of thing. We don't have a community as such, although that's developing, mm. where we can draw on to help in some of this stuff. But people come and they give freely. And mm. so, you know, it's it's a wonder. Yeah. Man. And we just, we're on it. Yeah. One way or another, we've got to do this for the body of Christ. Yeah. And if one can do it, then the law of the hundred monkeys will work. Mm -hmm. And it'll open up the, the platform for anyone else to start mm -hmm. doing the same thing. Yeah. So yeah. it's just exciting to me. It's that's just exciting. Man. Yeah, I'm just like, ah! Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> a perfect question for, for what's happening right now, you know, considering what happened in Aussie and, um, and what you've obviously had planned previously to this conversation um, in your heart and what's been working in other areas of your life as well, you know? So, yep. So yes, definitely, should we, would, should we be replic replicating this? A absolutely. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Really I mean, cool. I, I, I've often dreamed, you know, um, imagine having a thousand, um, you know, people of your age group mm. free of debt, in a body of people, all engaging, walking in the kingdom, grinding this stuff out in a normal life, all trading in the right way. Mm. Do you think we would lack for anything? Mm. Not only personally, because of the processes of, of, of um, trading and leverage and, and, and honorariums and all of these kind of things that, and to rumor and those kind of things, but can you imagine the impact it would have on community? Mm. Hey guys, we're gonna have a conference. Yeah, it's already paid for. Okay, good. Let's have one. How much is it gonna cost? Nothing. Yeah, that's next. Can you imagine running a conference with three thousand people costing you nothing? Yeah. Why? Because there's a body of people that have already paid for it, yeah. being willing to lay the treasure at the feet of the apostles. Mm -hmm. Well, we yeah, yeah. Or at the feet of the kings. Yeah. Because I really want to chunk this up because it's not so much about now. I don't find anywhere in scripture where it says an apostle sits on the throne. Touché. It actually says a king sits on the throne, mm -hmm. so we come together as kings mm -hmm. who sit on the throne. Can you imagine if everyone had learned how to become a king in a body of people mm. and we all come together not to become the big thing, but actually to honor one another and serve one another mm. and to do as a king the best I could. And mm. so when you come in the house, you bring a king's trade. Mm. Like, and if, if everyone did that. And they're all freehold. Yeah, like, you're yeah. psyched. I, yeah, I know. It. Anyway, okay. <laughs> oh, the yeah. last thing I was going to say about this I remembered um, was... Marios has talked about this. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if he's taught on it specifically, but um, he mentioned it at a conference in, in Nashville, I think. And he said, "Oh yeah, I mean, it's they probably were pretty upset because they took billions of dollars out of the economy." And yes. Is that <laughs> absolutely what do, true? What do you think? Well, maybe my question then is, what do you think will happen if we ever reach sort of the point of of what they did in Antioch and our day and age? Uh, okay, so I'm going to make another statement now. Finances, money, has the loudest voice in the face of the earth at the moment. Mm. And I'm talking about fiat, the currency we use yeah. to trade for buying goods. Yeah. It has the loudest voice on the earth. He has the, gold, you know, the golden rule, he has the gold rules. Mm. And so it's money that actually has the loudest voice, not opinions of people. Yeah. And so wherever you find a voice rising, you find money sitting behind it somewhere. Mm. And um, yeah, very true. Yeah, so um, I think if that ever happened, that suddenly what was what was a muted voice would mm. begin to, you know, have some influence. I mean, can you imagine if there's body people that had three or four billion amongst them? Mm. What influence they could have on not only a society but on a nation, mm. and how they could be influenced. So instead of money coming in, it's poured out. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. I, I just like, you know. Crazy. Anyway, cool. Exciting, man. Yep. <laughs> who, who knows? So, hey, this, you know, if we're going to live for a thousand years, hey. Yeah, we've got lots and, of time. And, and, we have, and we can do what, what Myers described as a thousand year day mm -hmm. where you have the provision of a thousand years come into one day. Yeah. Well, why not? Yeah. Yep. Streets are and, paved and, with and, gold. And, and please forgive, forgive me. This is not about, um, what, do you, what is that framework that people have used in the body of Christ um, that, that, uh, um. Overabundance? Oh, no, no, no. The, not the poverty. No, no, that not poverty. What do they call it? The rich teaching. Mammon. No, not mammon. Poverty I, mindset. 
No, it's not about poverty. It's about when someone oh, has oh, yeah. the wealth thing. Um, I've forgotten the name <laughs> yeah, of it. Yeah, same. Last. Hey, it's irrelevant to us. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. Um, but for me, it's, it's, not about, it's not about trying to propagate where people are going to become wealthy. Yeah. And, and having that whole thing. The wealth is found not only in, in financial arena, but emotionally, physically, relationally. spiritually, relationally, mm -hmm. as a community. Yeah. And so the wealth is all of those, not just yeah. having money. Yeah. Prosperity doctrine, that was it, I knew I'd get it. Oh, uh, yeah. It's not about, for me, it's not about prosperity doctrine. This is about something for the future. We can build a city. Yeah. Can you imagine building a city mm. that contains a household of Yahweh in the middle of it? Yeah. And, and every single house around it is part of that community and they're no, all debt free. Like, yeah. Like, oh, you know, what, yeah. whatever. I, I, anyway, praise God. <laughs> Beautiful. Yep. Well, here's a big pivot for you. <laughs> how long have we pre-existed as an illumination before coming into the womb and how do you know but my little bit at the end is how do you know okay so how long have we pre-existed um to put a time on it i couldn't really give you one mm. because scripture doesn't say i have epoch my, of time right yes epoch of time i have my own ideas and my own opinions about that from what I've seen in scripture and my conversations I've had with those that have lived forever. Mm. Um, and I can feel that's gonna have a really interesting reaction with people too when they hear this. Um, but I, um, if we look at, in Proverbs 8, you know, I was with him before all of these things, the foundations of the earth, before the works of old, his days of old, and before even um, the beginning was manifested, like all of those are full, complete creations in their own. I've done teachings on that stuff mm -hmm. that are, you know, are helpful for people to get to and understand it. But each of those is an epoch of what we would describe as seven days. Mm -hmm. But that's just a seven days as in a term or a period or an epoch of time. It's not 7,000 years as has been propagated. You know, mm -hmm. where it says that one day is like a thousand years elsewhere mm -hmm. or one day in the house of law is like a thousand years elsewhere, just to frame it correctly. So really a thousand years, how many days in a year? 365. Mm. So it's 365 times a thousand in one day. So it's 365,000 day, or th sorry, 365,000 years in a day. Years in a day. Yeah, right. So one day is 365,000 years times seven. Two sevens are 21. So there's 2.1. It's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. Like it's a lot. <laughs> So how long were we? I don't know. Yeah. Just do the multiplication going backwards, mm -hmm. times seven, times seven, times seven, times seven, and then it'll give you an idea of your journey to even become an illumination, mm -hmm. to give your light to the earth here in creation, positioned by Yahweh on your seat on the heavens. Also, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but Yahweh is not on time, right? Totally so correct. So what does that even mean? Yep. It's, it's, it, well, it's it, like it, right here, but also it's right here, but also it's billions it, it, of years our time in the yeah, future. Totally correct. So, so for me, it's, there is no such thing as when the scripture says, you know, that is the first day, it's an epoch of time or a period of time, and it's framed as however, as long as it takes. Ricky did some stuff on this. And, um, he did, amazing. And Clockworks of Heaven. Yep. He did some awesome stuff on that. Yeah, okay. Or well, maybe a, a personal lead up question that I've never had an answer to. <laughs> I don't know if this is a, I don't know if this is a um, cheeky question, but <clears throat> if... Yahweh is outside of time. I've always wanted to know your opinion on this. If Yahweh is outside of time, is the fall still happening? So the record of the passage that is gone, the record is there, but it's no longer happening. So it's like us when we are sinning, we then get affected by the record of the sin from our sinning. You can now break the record of sin on you that's come from your sinning through the blood but you can't undo what you've done right so what has already been done has been done and recorded the moment it's recorded it's now outside of time and stands as a single ingredient within the framework of where you sit within that so yahweh it's not still unfolding it's done right and he's now working with today that's right. why when you find in the old covenant, a man stands up and says, I take responsibility for my sin and the sin of my forefathers. He doesn't say, I'm now going to the sin of my forefathers and going to do their sin. Mm. So the record in him can be done away and broken because of mm. the issue of responsibility. But then what happens is that record's gone, but you can't undo, sorry, the, 
the not the record, let's frame it the in, in a drawing. Of it. The conditioning of what that has occurred in the life of a person can be dealt with so they can make new choices, mm. but the record cannot be expunged. There's only going to be one day when that happens, and that is when Yahweh rolls up in the very end everything to do with corruption, and time itself will be rolled up as part of that scroll, and the confinements of everything within that record will be done away with. That's what the word says. There will be no more mourning and no more tears in that day because mm. there will be no remembrance of it because the time will no longer exist that holds the record of all of that. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> this is typical Yahweh. Yeah, typical wow. Yahweh. That's a fantastic answer. So, so no, it's not still happening. It's happened, but the record of it sits and is being outworked Correct. currently. And dealt with us. And dealt with. So the moment you take responsibility, its continuation ceases. But and the, its effect, The repercussions of its yes, continuation. Yes, its effect ceases. Right. Which is amazing. Right. This is a gospel presented in a very spiritual, dynamic way about how Yahweh deals with the record. Because man cannot, cannot justify himself by his own works. Mm -hmm. I've just had a conversation with someone who was trying to justify themselves in their religious behavior by their works. Mm. And, and, you know, with someone who would not confess Christ as Lord mm. and so, um, and Savior. And so, but they were justified by their works and what they believed in. What they believed was their works and how they justify themselves by turning to God to engage with Yahweh, not through Christ, but mm. through something else. And mm. so, a man is not justified by his works. Mm. Even, even the works of righteousness are filthy. Mm. And so, um, anyway, we, we think we're right, we're wrong. And a man, if the word says, a man who, who says he's without sin deceives himself. Mm. And so, however, I do believe that doesn't undo the belief system that eventually, when we bear the image of our father and we bear the record of his genetics without mother and father anymore, but woven and grafted into the vine of our father's genetics where we are born of him, mm. then um, I believe we will no longer have corruption mm. in us where our physical structure will no longer suffer we won't be in the way we are now in the face of the world. So, yeah, it's just important little bits and pieces for mm. it, really. So for you, just to clarify, the, the thing that I have in my mind when I see timelines, I haven't seen them like you have in the kingdom, but uh, Interstellar, the movie, you know, when he gets trapped in a different timeline and he can see himself? Yeah. It's, so it's not really like that. It's more like mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. thing has happened. Yes. The record of it stands. Time keeps going. The record of that is affecting this until you have Christ. Correct. Life. Wow, that's Great. So and cool. also, you can't go back and see yourself. Yeah. However, um, Scripture's different, and I don't know how yet. Mm. Um, I've been back in Scripture and been very present in some encounters I've had with Christ in Scripture mm. when He was there. Never interfered in it, but He saw me and I saw Him. Wow. And okay. one of those I talk about when um, He was on the road going up to going raise Lazarus from the dead mm. and I've been engaging with that scripture for weeks trying to understand what was processed with it and in my in my home in my lounge in my room in my house engaging in process and mm. found that a transition out of the physical world and I could smell dust and you know all that kind of stuff mm. felt the heat opened my eyes and I was no longer in my room but in the word mm. and um, standing by the side of the road listening to everybody that was on the side of me with dust from them and and i could see this tomb around the corner and mm. and and as i i more more felt um yeshua's presence rather mm. than than knew it was him I, and when i felt it i turned and he was walking straight up the road and he just looked at me and then carries on walking and i and i knew he had seen me it undid a lot of my like mm. that's how life scripture is Mm. and still continues today to bring us into revelation of who mm. the Lord is. Well, here's the word too, right? I, I completely. And so, and because he's not in time. Yeah, of course. That's not caught. So anything to do with, with the word is not caught in time. In time. That's why yeah. it's timeless. That's why mm. the power in it still manifests today because mm. it's timeless. You can go back into it and engage with it. And mm. the revealing of that is still present today. Mm. But with, with with the timeline is a completely different thing. Yeah, right. So so yeah. what we see in scripture is snapshots. Yeah. So with us, 
the framework is still there and the record is still there. So the snapshot's still there, mm. but we can deal with the condition of it here. Yeah. So that with snapshot no, yep, no longer affects us. So mm. when that angel of justice comes, it looks for the blood. And so in, in Egypt, right. it went looking, it didn't go looking for the firstborn son, mm. it went looking That's for the blood. blood. When the blood was on the doorpost, the firstborn son of that house where the blood was, was fine. Mm. When there was no blood, the child of that house where there was no blood died. And I believe that happened with Ananias and Sapphira, which is where the conversation started. Wow. Is that in their lives, they were so full of pride that there was no blood on their doorpost, no holiness mm. and no righteousness. And justice manifested itself and revealed the nature of what was inside them. And it's the nature of corruption that destroyed them themselves. It wasn't Yahweh wow. killing them. And I guess that comes back to the flipping honesty thing that you talked about bro yep absolutely Character, man yep it's scary a lot of this stuff's really yeah. scary when you it's also just good you know healthy discussion who talks about this stuff you know especially yep. in church like i never don't remember a single teaching on character i grew up in the church you know didn't don't remember yeah. anyone talking about character um it's it's the mo yeah. for me it's the most important aspect of of our life with Yahweh in the book Melchizedek that I did, the first chapter is all in character. Mm. Because you've got to have it. If you don't have character, you've got nothing. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned. Love it. And character flows all the way into integrity. It flows all the way into your personal life. It mm. flows all the way into your secret life. Mm. You know, people have a public life, mm. then they have a secret life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what would happen if their secret life was really seen publicly? Mm. And Yahweh gets to a point, I think, where grace, 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 and he goes, no, I'm done. Mm. And because the blood's not present, mm -hmm. justice comes and reveals the very thing that's in secret. Mm. And so the secret hearts of a person get exposed mm. because of, of the lack mm. of holiness and righteousness and lack of character. And that's what's been happening to these world leaders. Yep, and not only world leaders, church leaders. Church, church world leaders, sorry. Fathers and and my heart, please don't get me wrong. My heart breaks for them and mm. I consider there by the grace of Yahweh go I. Mm. So I don't like I don't condemn them, but there's got to be a better way. Yeah, yeah. For for us as a body of people mm. to be able to stand rightly, it's got to be done right. Mm. And and yep. Mm. Cool man, beautiful. Don't really have much more to say on that subject. <laughs> it's only two questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are we? You are three questions deep. I like this next question. I don't know if I haven't heard you talk about this in a lot of years, like twenty years. But what is the importance of fasting in pursuit of intimacy with the Father? I, I think that fasting is a great tool to help facilitate um, an engagement with Yahweh. I never, ever fasted to get something. Mm. I fasted to chase. Mm. So when I would do those 40-day fasts... Oh, so you're just saying you didn't fast to, to be uh, fed... To, you fasted to, to, to chase, to chase. Yeah, and so to pursue Yahweh's presence. Mm. And so, um, so many people fast to try and get something done for them, to mm. fast to accomplish some task right. or to, to get healing or like, and that's great. Yeah. Praise yeah. God for that. Um, I don't personally, I've never done that. Mm. That's never been my focus and I've never found much fruit comes from that. Is it biblical? Like in terms of fasting to get healing? No. It's it's a doctrine of the church, right? I believe. Yeah. Where so, it, what's the? Do you know the reference in, in the? In the uh, word? You know, well, I, I know the word does talk about when you fast and when you pray and yeah. doing all of those kind of things. But even prayer isn't necessarily the side of the veil going Yahweh help me, Yahweh help me, yeah, Yahweh yeah, help exactly. me. It's actually being in His presence, negotiating like this in yeah. conversation with Him. Mm -hmm. Not there's not that's not one way because I'm not a slave or a servant. Yeah. I'm a son, mm. and so a slave only only wants to do what's right and is afraid of the master. A servant is one who wants to do what's right and waits for instructions. And a son wants to do what's right, waits for instruction and goes and asks if he's not given any. Mm. So Hold up an like, issue. You feel like the fasting thing to get something is more of like a slave-servant yeah, mentality? Yeah, it's because I like, need something and I need, yeah, and I need right. met. Right. Yahweh's not into our needs he's not in our comfort either. He's interested in our maturity. In our relationship. Yeah, yeah, and so I've always fasted to do that. Yeah, right. So there are times when I, when I still fast these days, but it's not, um, it's not a, what I would describe a massive bent in my life mm. style with Yahweh now. Um, it was for a while. Though. You did two 40-day fasts? No, I did six in total. Six 40-day fasts? Yep, one, one year in, in the, like in the very, those very beginnings, about probably about 10 years into this, just because um, I felt like my relationship with Yahweh 
needed to unlock. Mm. So I, I fast that year, I fasted 163 days. In that year, I just, I just pushed in. Every second day was fasting. And then I did a week, a week fast in the middle of all of that. Just to, just to purposely chase. I wanted Yahweh and I wasn't getting it from Sunday meetings. I wasn't even getting it at home. And so that's like yeah. over that's more than 160 days. Yeah, it was it was a long time. Yeah. Holy moly. It was a long time. And so right. but it was just like and it set a course for me mm. in in that year because the, the hunger drove me. Yeah, right. And I used it as a trigger to turn, mm. which is where I learned how far away heaven was. It's mm. Not out there somewhere far, far away mm. where no man's been before, you know, about the atmosphere of the earth, demons between me and Yahweh. It's as close to me as the air that I breathe. Christ says that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah. All you got to do is lean into it and it becomes a source of your supply. Yeah. And that, that year taught me how to lean into it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Which man. was, I mean, it was amazing. So yeah. your answer to that in short is, what's it, what is the importance of fasting in pursuit of intimacy? It is important. Yep. And it is about the pursuit. It's not about getting something. Correct. Absolutely yeah. correct. So many people go into fasting to get something. Yeah. And I don't believe, personally, I don't believe that's mm. all right. Like I'm fasting right. for a new job Modus or I'm fasting. No. Yeah, right. So that's not really, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, it's, to be honest. It's, it's like giving to get. Mm. Um, I, I, I don't give to get. I, I trade to leverage the future mm. to unlock what, what hasn't been locked. But what I want, everything. Mm. Mm. And it's not specific. I want whatever Yahweh's got for me. I'm doing this to that. Yeah, and you want all of yeah. it. You know, miss out on a portion. Yep. Beautiful. We were spirit before we were sent to earth. But what did that dimension look like? I mean, that's just... Sorry. I, I don't really know how to, how to answer that. Um, what did it look like? Well, if the reference point we have is the earth, it doesn't look like the earth. Mm. Um, Isn't it just the kingdom? We were there when he created it, right? Um, yeah, but it's a, it's a dimensional realm. The spirit kingdom world is a dimensional realm mm. that we were all occupying before we were here. Mm. And the final stage of us occupying that space to observe this was when the scripture says in Genesis that we were illuminations in the heavens to give our light to the earth, mm. to rule over the day and night and to be governed times and seasons, days and years. And then it says he... You know, he put the sun and the sun in, in place and then made the stars also. That was the mm -hmm. afterthought. So the stars we see out there aren't those stars from mm -hmm. the illuminations. And mm -hmm. of course, I've done teachings on that. Yep. But I believe that as an illumination, we were a full blown spirit being with full maturity, full knowledge of our journey through from the eternal realm, through all of the creative epochs of time and periods into being positioned so that in creation we could be an observer, sorry, in the beginning we could be an observer of creation. I have a question, a follow-up question. Here you go. This is part of the word, right? Yes, correct. So if we were spirit and we were in illum illumination for the foundations of the earth with Yahweh in creation while he was creating it, is that still happening while we're here? Are we still that and this? I, I believe no. Right. Because we left our seat there to come here. However, a preparation to make a new heaven and a new earth is based about us being reseated on that seat, which is where scripture says we are seated in heavenly places in Christ. Uh, I'm getting confused with timeline. Okay, so out of time and timeline. So... We stepped into a timeline. Correct. Yeah, okay. So we're not there and here at the same time. Right. But as a spirit being, I can still be there and go back and sit on that seat. Right, right. Okay. But also, I believe as a spirit soul body being, mm. I can go back and sit on that seat, mm. which means that my body is no longer human. Mm -hmm. It's been undone from human genetics and now has been seated by Yahweh and born of God himself where I no longer sin. And the evil one touches me not where I can take me and myself and mm -hmm. I and my body, spirit, soul, body, being, and go and sit as that being on that governmental seat to be able to observe the time frame in the future where mm -hmm. there is a new heaven and a new earth and allow my light to begin to shine into that area before mm -hmm. I'm even there. So is this a bit of a uh, Elijah Moshe <laughs> <Yeah>. situation? <laughs> Am I correct in thinking yes, that? Yes, totally correct. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I think I'm thinking 
outside of time and in time any time in the timeline in a timeline yeah, yeah. got you we, we we are we are not omnipresent but what if we're like yet. god yeah okay <laughs> we're not omnipresent yet yeah so the way we become omnipresent is to become woven in the fabric of who our father is fully identified in him mm. and then where he is we are also yeah which means that all of that opens up to us yeah. but again it's based on the level of your maturity and responsibility yeah he's not going to give it to a child totally even though the scripture says a son child child which is a technon a son not male or female mature immature adam mm. a son adam um Though Although he, he is Lord of all, yeah, is under tutors and governors until the point of time. So Lord of all, what's that mean? Yeah, still Lord of all. Yes, yeah, still Lord of all. So we are omniscient, but we're not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, but this is where it goes oh, yeah. in your level of yeah. maturity. As you mature until mm -hmm. that time, mm -hmm. when you've gone through maturing process by your tutors and governors, that lordship won't manifest on you. Can you name one of your tutors? Uh, yeah, Elijah. There we go. Yep. <laughs> Elijah, Moses, yeah. um, Abraham, I've been around all of them, all the seven spirits of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference between tutor and governor. Mm -hmm. So tutor is the seven spirits of Yahweh. They tutor us about our role as a son, kingship, and I've done teachings on all of those, mm -hmm. which are available on Son of Thunder membership.com and also on my sonofthunder.org website. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, the, 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 the Governors are the really in, interesting mm. ones, which I generally I find the people in the word that I get drawn to, you know. Um, yeah, whoever you're drawn to. In any yeah, way. and so my encounter yeah. with Ezekiel and yeah. all of that process is because he's one of my one of my governors. He's mm. been assigned to my scroll because of my heart mm. to engage with the purpose of why he was here, mm. what he saw, how he saw it, and that encounter that happened through that mm. over the whole seven day period when I went blind and blah blah, and yeah. so. Yeah, well, yeah. cool. Was, why was Jesus' death the perfect sacrifice for our sins? It was because of the holiness that he walked in and also because he was the Son of God. Yeah, that's a pretty so, simple one, eh? Yeah, like, um, you know, the, his blood, he sacrificed once for all men where the blood of goats and sheep and oxen are, are, and also doves, turtle doves, are, are no longer necessary. Mm. He did it once for all men. Yeah. But the, to receive that, you've got to be entangled with him in relationship mm. and, and honor who he is and acknowledge who he is. Mm. Anyone who doesn't acknowledge Christ as Lord and Savior of their life in this life, and I'm not talking about once they're dead, mm -hmm. the scripture is very clear about in this life. Mm -hmm. We acknowledge him in this life, then in that process, it then unfolds for us. I love it. What does an average day in the life of Ian Clayton look like? <laughs> Probably depends on the day, eh? It does. Generally coming awake at five o'clock in the morning out of my night watch, which is usually between one and four in the morning where I'm very busy, mm -hmm. involved in my function in Yahweh's world and realm. I have responsibilities that I need to take care of, things that I've been given jurisdiction over and, 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 and oversight of. Mm -hmm. um, get up, wait, get up and from that period of time, engage with the womb of the morning, engage with me as an overshadowing of my day, then sit in my day and learn how to mediate myself to what I've already seen mm. for my day. Um, do you do all of these things every single day really intentionally? I, I did for four or five years. Yeah, right. So you and it's do just things kind of for a while. Of, yeah. yeah, it's just well, once, I, once I built a platform, I can jump on it any time. So it's inherent sometimes. Yeah, correct. I, yeah. just, I just do it. Like I, I, love, I love the first hours of coming out of the the hashek of Yahweh where I've sat for that night watch or right. the role of what I have and my responsibilities to the ordinations I've gone through there not here um, I found it so important for uh, sorry I, I found the enjoyment of sitting in the womb of the morning incubating and engaging with the things that I don't understand yet mm. and the mysteries that I've seen that I have no framework for yet mm. And so I engage with the womb of the morning and incubate them and sit amongst them and allow my light to shine into them and to engage with them and allow them to grow and respond and to unravel and reveal. Like I just love between 4 and 5.30 in the morning. Mm. That is like it's a beautiful time for mm. me. 
because it's when I'm really relaxed and can move anywhere within the the sphere of my of the womb that I've established in right. that place. And I've done teachings on that as well. But mm -hmm. um, really love that period. I also really love the period just before I go to sleep mm. and setting my heart to engage in it. Um, I live a very normal life. I'm very mm. busy, mostly. Um, and usually I'm very busy unless there's something else that precludes that. Um, but I live a busy life. I love gardening. So I'm out in the garden mm. every day doing something. If I spend at least between half an hour and an hour a day in some way at the end of the day or through the day in the garden. Mm. Just I love puttering because it helps my heart engage with Yahweh. It's my sanctuary away from the noise that's around me. Mm. Um, really enjoy being in my garage, being around tools, doing stuff inside there, doing mechanical things mm. when I get the chance to do it. Um, mm. There wasn't demons coming out. There was a beautiful <laughs> lunch I've just had. Yeah, nice. Love it. Um, but I, I just, yeah, so my, my, I live a busy life. But for me, there's also the purposeful turn through the day. Mm. Yeah, you know, right. I, I've talked about the, the triggers that I use. Mm. So, you know, going to the restroom and putting my hand on a sink bench mm. on the tap, you know, touching my computer 10 seconds just to engage. Gauge with Yahweh's mm. realm, entangle myself in it, come back here and start. Mm. Just walking in and out, up and down, and doing the spiraling ladder mm. and the staircase that engages with the Shin God all and the God to mm. give me eternal life and give me the ability to ascend and descend in the right way. Not ascension, but yeah, ascending in mm. the right way through the staircase. So you have a bunch of things that you've worked on and they're inherent and you kind of engage with them throughout your normal it's days. It's just normal. It's yeah. just normal life. To, to me, sorry, I don't mean that in a horrible way. For me, it's normal life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't understand why people don't do it. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why they can't do it. Um, and and that's my personal struggle. Mm. I do I do know that people can't and and, and that's okay. Mm. This is just, this is me. This is who exactly. I am. Yeah. This is where I'm at, what I'm doing. Yeah, I love it. Um, There's, yeah. so, there's so much. I mean, I there's don't know so how, how long we've had now. Uh, yeah. so it's got to be an I hour. Just, yeah, I was going uh, to finish up with a, an interesting question. Um, yeah, there's other things I'd love to get to, but um, what does what does it feel like to have, it's appropriate to this podcast too, which is so beautiful that someone asked it, but someone asked, what does it feel like to have a hope for the future? I don't know if this was asked out of a, a hopeless place or if it's just like, they're seeing a hope and they want to engage with that. So I'm not really sure the context. Hope, but. hope is a true life. Mm. So for me, um, for me, it's the ability to pick low hanging fruit from things that I've dreamed about. <clears throat> There's still a lot today that I'm still dreaming about, it's still engaging with. And I will, you know, even if I die, I'm going to die believing. And my hope is, is anchored in something that's not yet seen. Mm. Otherwise, what is hope? The scripture says that. You know, what is hope if it's achieved? But mm. hope is something that is just out of reach, but actually reachable mm. and achievable, but also not achievable. Mm. It stretches your boundaries of your pig tent, tent, tent pigs. <laughs> yeah, pig tents. <laughs> What's pig that? Tents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my dyslexia. Um, and so for me, it's that stretching out process mm. that hope does. It helps build a tent. So I. I I, I've just done a really great session on hope mm. and and the different aspects of hope and and my dreams for the future and what I'm hoping in, mm. just so that people have an idea. I've always found that if I have a hope today for tomorrow, today is concluded quickly because mm. I'm tethered in tomorrow and looking forward to tomorrow. Mm. So if I have something like we're going on a holiday next week, I'm already tethered in Monday, sitting down in my chair doing Nothing. Doing nothing, doing absolutely you know, nothing. Having to having to do nothing, and so and not being able to do anything, and so um, and that's a choice. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it's it's like and because that's where I'm tethered. Mm -hmm. Today goes really fast. Tomorrow goes really fast, and the next go, day goes really fast, mm -hmm. and then I'm going. Mm -hmm. And so what it does, it hastens the day for me. Mm -hmm. And so in Scripture talks about how in the last days Yahweh will hasten the time for the elect's sake. Mm. I found the more I hope for the future, the more faster time goes mm. because I've got things that I'm looking forward to that I want to see come to pass. I guess what does it, like she asked, um, what does it feel like to have a hope for the future? What Amazing. does it feel like? It feels like an anchor. Feels I've, like an I've anchor. Got, I've got something to, 
to engage for for tomorrow that's worth to. that's worth the issues of the day yeah right yep that's beautiful cool i love that um i just wrote and how, how do you think someone could start to engage with having that anchor i think have a listen to the teaching because it's an hour long okay and so when it comes on the website and sundathundermembership.com please avail yourself of it it's an hour long teaching and i talk about how to do that what it is, yeah. how, how, what I've dreamed about, the things that I've hoped for and what my mm. future hopes are. Mm. You know, and I've talked about that, having a different body, yeah. one that's woven with the fabric of the genetics of Yahweh with the living letters, <laughs> the being of light, you know. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah. yeah, anyway, yeah. Okay. So that's one of them. <laughs> one. Okay, I love it. Well, thank you so much for those who, um, who asked questions. Thank you so much for your time. Yep. As, as for, for, for anyone that, that has questions like this, in our, in our membership, there is a Q&A once a month with me for mm. two hours. Mm. And it's there. People get to ask questions mm. personally with a, in the whole group, as well as questions that are sent in to us as well. Mm. And so I have no doubt we'll can use some of these for some questions on the Q&A. Yeah. But it's so, so wonderful to be able to help people at grassroots levels like this. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, it's one of the most enjoyable things is to have a Q&A. Yeah, that's cool. I've, I've, I've always enjoyed them mm. because it gets things done and gets people's mm. answers instead of having a whole lot of stuff. It can get concisified down. However, the whole lot of stuff is the preparation bed that mm. makes you able to do something more than just have an answer. It's also so cool too, because when, I mean, you have like 100 people on your Q&As from the membership. Yeah, 187 180, last week. <laughs> which is incredible that yeah. so many people would, would show up like that. And isn't it cool that one person would ask a question, be vulnerable to ask a question live? How many other people would be thinking the yeah. same question? Which well, the, is word, so the, great. the word says all things like that are common to all men. Sin is common to all men, mm. and questions are common to all men. We yeah. all have them. And Absolutely. so, thank you for asking. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's us. Shalom. Thank you so much. Shalom. Shalom. And we'll see you on the next episode.